Romans chapter 16 verse 20. This is a very familiar portion of scripture. There are three thoughts in this portion. Number one, our God is a God of peace. He's going to do some things very swiftly. What is he going to do very swiftly? One of them is that he's going to crush Satan under your feet. When we learn the scriptures, our God is a God of peace. As, I, as I'm going to preach this, lovingly let me ask you a question. How many of you are able to enjoy peace? Maybe you have all material possessions. Maybe you are educated and maybe you are good looking. But how many of you are enjoying the peace that the word of God is talking about? I have seen a lot of people. They are born again. They are baptized. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. But the kind of peace that the Bible is talking about, they are not able to experience. In my sermon, I want to say today, may your house be filled with the peace of God. Let there be a godly peace in your personal life. Jesus Christ promised us, my peace I give unto you. It is not a peace that the world gives. I give you a peace the world cannot give. He is able to give us. Paul is writing to the Corinthians. There is something Paul is saying. Paul is saying. God is not a God of disorder. He is a God of peace. Do you have the peace of God? Hallelujah. Praise God. There is another verse in Corinthians. We are the God of peace. God has called us to live in peace. Every day. Every day. We need to live in peace. Ask yourself. Are you able to live in peace? If not, maybe you have a financial difficulty. Let me tell you one thing. When the peace of God reigns in our heart, when, he write, when Paul is writing the Colossians, something he is reminding. May the peace of Christ reign in our heart. Christ dwell and reign in your heart. It is not fear that should dwell in your heart. It is not tension. Peace has to reign in your heart. Or if you are listening to us and you don't have peace, a great peace for you. The word of God is teaching. Pagans don't have peace. But they have the peace of God. Isaiah is prophesying about their life. Isaiah 57 verse 21 There is no peace says my God for the wicked. On the the wicked are like the tossing sea. They cannot rest. Whose waves cast up mire and mud. What does that mean? The wicked have no peace. But the saints of God have to enjoy peace. There is a revelation in the word of God. Everybody has problems. Everyone has troubles. If it is disease for somebody, it is debt for someone else. If it is debt for someone, someone else has something else. As we are living in this world, we will have problems. But there is no connection between peace and problems. 
problems. Even behind prison bars, Paul is saying, Rejoice in the Lord. So this morning you need to pray. Lord, I need peace. God is speaking to some of you. The kind of peace you have never tasted before. My Lord is giving you. My Lord is giving you. Our God is a God of peace. As you are listening to me, touch your heart and say, Lord, let that peace reign in my heart. No matter what you have, no matter what you have, zero. If you don't have peace, you are zero. Even if you don't have anything, if you have peace, hero. you are a hero. Let the, for that to happen, that peace has to reign in our hearts. As you are listening to this message, God is standing beside you. Brother or sister, brother or sister, may that peace come into your heart. What, uh, my God is like he, he is the mighty king. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. As I'm going to preach, I'll explain about the peace of God. The message for you. Lift your hands and say, God is a God of peace. Keep it, keep it right. Wherever you want to enjoy peace. Some areas you need to bring into my mind. About my child's family life. In my business. In my personal life. In my personal life. May that peace reign in Jesus name. Let the spirit of the Lord is ministering to you. May that peace come into your heart. And it's written there. Peace of God. 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 Crush. Satan under your feet. What I'm going to preach today. Swiftly some things are going to happen. Very soon it's going to happen. Very soon it's going to happen. I still remember. I was praying for a brother. For a long time I prayed. Then I went to my brother. He was praying for a long time I prayed. Around 30 times I prayed. He had cancer in his throat. It cannot be. Operated. If, he, if it is done, then his voice will be lost. There was a tumor here. Then another one came. Then again, one more. Three tumors. And again and again, I prayed. Nothing happened. A lot of saints of God prayed. No change happened. After a while, one day he called me. Pastor, 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 from this morning, I'm feeling some difference. I asked him what? The swollen tumor has shrunk. Three days I prayed. Three days later, he called me. Pastor, it has shrunk. It has gone down to the size of a small. Like a small stone. And it has shrunk. After one week, 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 one Swiftly those papers will be moved. Very soon God will work in your family.